Hey everyone, Art here. We weren't able to record an episode last week because of all the homecoming craziness, and we tried really hard, but it was just between the parade and the home football game and Kevin having to coach and Lisa and I having to also run, run the band and all this kinds of stuff we had going on. We just weren't able to record, but what was neat is that we actually had an opportunity to interview Dan Potts, who was actually one of the former directors in Monmouth Roseville. And so what we decided to do is actually make a little mini episode for you guys to kind of hold you over. But rest assured, Friday, this upcoming Friday, we will have a brand new episode for you guys. So uh, thank you for your patience and enjoy this interview with Dan Potts. Okay, so we have here Dan Potts, the legend at uh, Monmouth Roseville. It's really, really awesome to have you here. Um, you know, so w- thank you so much for being here. And we're recording this live <laughs> uh, uh, at the homecoming game. Um, you know, we tried to do the podcast, but it just wasn't going to happen because it was just so busy. For all you teachers that know, uh, podcast uh, doing a podcast, <laughs> but doing a podcast during homecoming is almost near impossible for high school teachers. So we're recording this in advance. <laughs> And then you guys will listen to it uh, when the episode comes out. But Dan Potts, thank you so much for being here. Uh, so Dan, tell us a little bit about yourself and the history at Mammoth Roseville. Yeah, thanks for having me out. A gorgeous Friday night light situation here in the heart of the Midwest over in Monmouth. It's an amazing place to be. Thank you for uh, the invitation to come out and dot the Absolutely. I. Absolutely. Uh, quite an honor uh, to do that. Um, lots of memories here. Just tons of Friday night light memories here with the uh, with, with the band, starting with the Zippers and then merging into the Monmouth Roseville group mm-hmm. and seeing that transition. I think one of the best memories was uh, we took the field as the Monmouth band and the Roseville band in the respective school colors and then were able to pull t-shirts off to reveal one unified color oh, Monmouth that's... Roseville on oh, the first oh, home God. game. That's such a cool idea. That was a really yeah. cool thing and it was, you know, the, 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 the fun parts were you know, having great conversations with students about how to remove a T-shirt, that's probably not the greatest thing you can get away with anymore, you know. Right. But it was uh, it was fun and, and practicing to see everybody come together and be united uh, with that process. And, and maybe I should say merged, as united might not be a good term around here with the other nearby school district. <laughs> so um, that's certainly a, a fond memory. I also recall um, several moments uh, in preparing. There was a tune called Three Airs from Gloucester. I can't remember the um, composer right now. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, Hugh, thought, Hugh Stewart. And it's yeah, funny, we actually yeah. just did the second movement Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. for organizational last semester. Love so, it. The, so the kids would actually know yeah. which, which piece that is. Awesome. So I remember we were putting that together and I was thinking, man, the instrumentation of the two schools combined is putting together a pretty good success for that. And so I remember having some great moments. Um, with uh, that tune in rehearsal, and then um, Fillmore's The Klaxon. Oh, yeah, we that's a good rehearsed, tune. rehearsed, oh, and yes. practiced, and talked about the components of a march and the engine of a march. Yes. And then I recall um, at, uh, what was the big Pops Festival, the ice cream social kind of thing? Yeah, Pops a Yeah, Pops yep, yep, we still do that. We, we lit up the klaxon in the gym, and you could see people's faces turn around oh, and everything. Neat. It was a really cool thing. And then that year, we had a really high, if not perfect, score at contest. And oh. I'm just super proud of the effort that the kids put into There's that no particular there. time, yes. merging uh, and, and, and getting used to one another yeah. while still carrying their own esprit de corps from their respective schools coming yeah, in. So quite good. a moment in history. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, like, I think for, for most people, um, you know, like, they have their established school like it's been there since you know the 1900s right but to have a school especially maybe in like and not so long ago to have a moment of change like that i mean it's maybe somewhat unheard of i don't know i mean i guess it depends on where you are but um i think think you definitely took an opportunity like that where you know there is separation you found like the commonalities and then you made a unification through music and i think that's that's just an incredible story in general um very inspiring i'd say so awesome! All right. Well, uh, you mentioned quite a few things, but like, I mean, is there like something that really sticks out to you as a favorite memory, or maybe something that just like during the merger that really stood out to you as inspirational, or, or like what, what, like when you think of a favorite memory at Monmouth Roseville, what so- seems to come to mind? Yeah, often? certainly the first game was really cool with that that process of coming together, and then there are, there were multiple in Roseville. There was a, a Memorial Day parade where we would. Um, honor uh several folks there uh and we played the naval hymn that was cool to see everybody do that and anything that was patriotic and of course one of the best duties that we have together Mm -hmm. is that we always get to conduct the national anthem yes something we we take with us forever oh a lot of times friends family will ask what are your what was your favorite part about being a band director Mm -hmm. and and those memories i'll take away for sure that that definitely is i can agree with that i don't know what it is i think it's maybe just because it's such a 
a significant piece of music in our nation that, you know, any chance to be in front of an ensemble and perform that, there is, there is like, this stuff like, like this, this sensation of pride and, like, you know, uh, nationalism and whatnot towards, like, just everything that's happening and all eyes are on you at the same time. It's very, it's very unique for sure. Yeah. Um, all right, so, uh, well, uh, we may have mentioned a second ago, but if not, um, you were famous for writing the fight song here at the high school. So tell us a little bit about that. Go Titans, go. Yeah, famous or infamous. Which one is it, really? Uh, I think it's famous for everyone listening. <laughs> but then if you were in the band, maybe it might be a different story. <laughs> yeah, I remember going through that process thinking, okay, you know, colors are changing. Mascots are changing. I guess school songs have to change, too. And this is a moment that we need to put something together because you certainly can't bring in one or the other school's right. school song, right? So um, the opportunity to bring together a school song was... Um, Something that I studied. I came from the Big Ten. I was a University of Iowa uh, uh, Hawkeye Marching Band member oh, and, and member studying a lot of the songs. And it was been an easy move to adopt, like a you know an on Wisconsin or uh, Illinois school song, mm-hmm. or, and just kind of bring those in. Some high schools do that, and there was a cool opportunity to bring in something that was unique. Oh, and so tried to write it in the projection ranges oh, of instruments so that the, it was a comfortable range for all instruments, and in there in, in, in a way that the sound can travel a little bit more. Right. In a, in a, in a, but it's like a simple meter song mm-hmm. that is. Uh, it, you know, easy to play uh, and, and sounds strong regardless of instrumentation because we all know that comes in and out each year, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, and um, uh, that was a big part of it. And then, you know, enough unison and octaves but have enough harmony built in that it still carried through the stands mm-hmm. was something that was kind of a priority during that process. So it was fun to arrange that and, and put that together for sure. I remember the, at the school board meeting mm-hmm. when it was adopted and it was the official school song, and then we went out to some others for some lyrics. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, a cool moment in history to be, uh, you know, in the right place at the right time. Yes, exactly, yeah. I mean, I think it's just, I mean, for me personally, I've never, I've always tried to, like, write things, but, I mean, it's, it's very cool to see, like, how the process works, and uh, I'm just glad it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Because if it was me, let's just say uh, I think the crowd would be empty during pregame. <laughs> if I was, I was, I was writing the, the fight song. Maybe so some that's ACDC very, very cool. or some Metallica yeah, yeah, arrangements exactly, or yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah, instead of taking a school song, maybe they just take a classic rock tune and say, "Yeah, this is our song now, school song." So that's right. Yeah, we were so, rock you or something. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. Well, and I and then I talked with Mr. Ferry, and he 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 wanted to make sure that I let you know that every time the hip hip hooray for Mr. Touchdown comes on, he is just singing along with. The, with you the entire time so that's really good. really cool and i, I uh, think that's a really really neat again piece of history and the fact that you are able to come here and be here uh at this game i think yeah, it's is, awesome. uh, is, is really neat for the kids and we even you know just a few minutes ago introduced you to the kids and they were like who is this guy and it's like i don't know the guy that wrote yeah. you your fight song uh, got you uniforms let's just say like changed uh, the course of your band program forever <laughs> there was a lot of changes during <laughs> yes that time. exactly that's right. so i think it's really really cool well, to wrap up here, um, so you were an educator, uh, right. and I think, you know, reflecting upon how your previous um, uh, tenure as the band director uh, versus maybe how you see schools now, um, what, what advice would you give to teachers to help them stay motivated and excited for teaching music? It's It, it can be a very rewarding job, but there's definitely times where it's straining or if it definitely feels like very – very long and tiring day, but but what would advice would you give them to say like to keep at it? Yeah, and, and you know, in a, in a short phrase, you matter. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a lot of times when in, in, in this current generation, and it's not a fault, they are raised sometimes on their cell phones. Parents are our auxiliary, teachers are our auxiliary, but programs with band and, and, and the extracurriculars go on with sports, etc. Often, often that um, you know nature versus nurture piece. So you matter. Um, definitely a role model. They're they're looking and watching all of the time. Um, one of the things that I always focused on was to keep things with purpose and relevancy always in the classroom. And if it wasn't, I had to have an explanation to get their attention to say, why are we doing this? Because mm-hmm. I, I owed it as a duty to expose you to something that maybe isn't purposeful or relevant to your life. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, that was the, 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 the keeping it purposeful and, and, and relevant in the classroom always was a way to um, keep students motivated. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just a rewarding piece. There, there's just a lot of great things happening tonight the kids are really impressive very respectful uh, respectful and it was very cool to see the mm-hmm. um opposing team school song get played that yeah is yeah that is i mean that is that is a very old-fashioned tradition that i think that i honestly can't tell you how many other schools even do it 
but uh, it's definitely definitely unique and definitely stands out for us. And you know, we we obviously do our best because it's not our fight song, so we have to practice it a little bit. But uh, but at least out of respect of the visitors, we at least uh, give it our best shot. And and to go back to a little bit what you said before about how it being like you know it's all Wisconsin or yeah. Eye or Notre Dame even like it's definitely like some moments of like. <laughs> Uh, like, why do I know his tune? It's like, well, because it's technically not the university. But that's yeah, what they used to do back then. Right? They just, instead of writing a fun song, they just say, we're going to borrow yours. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Awesome. Well, um, thank you, Dan. I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for coming out to do this. This is such a really cool thing. Like, whether the, again, again, whether the uh, students, like, take full advantage of, like, you know, you being here, what that means, um, I think they, they still were witness history, and I think that was really, really cool for you to be here. So thank you again for your thank time. You, thank you, Mr. Martinez. Appreciate it. Yeah. That, and uh, don't be a stranger. Feel free to come by yeah, anytime. Man. Thank you. Appreciate Mr. it. Ch- Mr. Touchdown will always be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sounds awesome. Good. Thanks so much. Thank you.